My name is Rachel DiMartino. I'm 32 years old and I live in Alexandria, Virginia. Hi, my name is Kayla Pennington and I'm 23 years old. I go by she and her and I'm from Fredericksburg, Virginia. My name is Stone Rhodes. I'm 25 years old, he, him, and I am originally from Detroit, Michigan. My name is Rebecca. I'm 31. Pronouns are she, her, and I live in Northern Virginia. Hello, I'm Gail, also known as Fred Rapunzel. And I, my pronouns are she, her. I'm 29 years old, and I'm originally from Southern Maryland in Charles County, but now I live in the Baltimore area. Hi, my name is Michaela. I use they, them pronouns. I am 25 years old, and I'm from Washington, D.C. What kind of modeling do you do, and how long have you been modeling? I use the term model very lightly. I don't really consider myself professional by any means. This is a fun hobby I get to do on the weekends. I've been doing this for about two years. So I've been modeling two to three years now. This year is my first professional year. I do a lot of portrait photography, um, and I also uh, do commercial and fashion, editorial and fantasy. It's a eight years now uh, since I was in high school. I've been a part of a lot of commercial shoots as well as uh, promotional shoots. Uh, the most recent shoot that I did was actually here at Tyson's Mall uh, for a promotional uh, gig that they had going on. So I've been a freelance model since 2017 and the type of modeling I do is portrait, glamour, fashion, editorial, lifestyle. Um, I've started recently doing some swimsuit and then I've had one runway show and I would really like to start getting into uh, like um, commercial modeling because I haven't done it before so I think it'd be fun. I do a little bit of everything. I've done some runway modeling, I've done some wow editorial, <laughs> I've done some fashion modeling, I've done some campaign stuff as well. And what are your opinions on the modeling industry? It's hard to say since I don't really consider myself serious about modeling. It's hard to say that I have any opinions about it. But the thing I like about it most is the creative outlet, the ability to make new friends and try new things. Uh, I think it has come so far from what it used to be and I love how they're encouraging just about everything now. It doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. They're just so much more accepting now than they used to be and they still have a long way to go. It's definitely going to be threatened by AI whether people know that or not. It's also a lot more difficult than people think it is. And it's also a lot more industrial than people think it is because you have commercial models who are part of agencies and they get commercial work and it's barely enough to pay their bills. And then there are portrait models who you know get nice photos taken and you know network with people in the local area, but it's a different type of modeling. I think that the modeling industry is a good way to get your foot into the door when it comes to uh, being a creator, being a part of the creative world. I think modeling opens the door to uh, a lot of different avenues when it comes to, you know, starting a brand or getting involved in something within the creative business that you want to get into. Okay, so I've been modeling since 2017, so for several years, but because I've always only been freelance, I'm not really the most up to date with or educated, I guess, on the modeling industry. Like I've never signed with a company or anything. So I would say then, based on my personal experience with modeling, it's fantastic because since I'm freelance, I set my own schedule, I choose who I work with, so I really think it's great. Um, I feel like very common opinions about the modeling industry. I feel like I think there's a lot of room for improvement. I think that they've taken some strides to make it more inclusive and diverse, but there's still a lot of steps that they can improve upon. How do you stay up to date on the latest social media trends? We love a good Instagram reel, don't we? <laughs> I am not much of a person who creates a lot of videos or a whole lot of content, but the way to stay up to date on things is see what other creators and other artists are up to. Instagram is the way to go. TikTok is a very good way. Um, I follow, a, so I tend to follow more content that I enjoy and I feel inspired by, so a lot of fashion people. Um, and then just looking, kind of looking at what they're doing, seeing what's trending on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. I just use social media. I don't really care about trends. <laughs> For social media trends, I typically like to 
follow certain accounts on Instagram. I'm a heavy user of Instagram and um, I also like to uh, gain my modeling knowledge from uh, outreaching to other individuals and other companies. So I think a really good way of doing that is by using LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is a really good way to follow up with trends and see what's going on with uh, you know, other models, other agencies, as well as like other companies. I'm a little behind on that since it's not my full-time nor part-time job. I, I, I see what other models are doing and photographers and videographers. I try to keep up with those things, but since modeling is mostly just like take a picture and it's like a still image, I'm not the most up to date with everything because right now social media has taken a turn and they want video content instead of photo content, so I'm, I'm behind. <laughs> Mostly by absorbing media on social platforms such as Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, kind of finding whatever trending audio, trending videos, reels to make, stuff like that. What techniques do you use to engage followers and increase your brand on social media? Ooh. Didn't think I had a brand. <laughs> it definitely helps to know people and getting to know all these wonderful photographers and new friends by doing all the events such as these. I've gotten a chance to have new followers and make new friends based on their followers and that's how I've grown in that aspect. But when it comes to the basics, it's all about who you know and I'm blessed to have a lot of good friends. I do a lot of polls and I ask a lot of questions. I've, I've just recently started making reels on Instagram to try to get comfortable with everything and I've just started TikTok. So I'm still learning and taking advice from other people with that. I don't use TikTok and I just use Instagram and I found out that regularly posting, regularly engaging with followers, commenting on people's posts and stories, uh, replying to your DMs, like all these things are kind of you can find any of this advice anywhere and do them, uh, but there's no make or break going viral formula yet, which I think is like the golden ticket question because everyone wants to go viral at least once, even though it's not a sustainable way to grow. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm doing. I feel like I don't have the best, the most expert advice since I'm hovering right at the 2000 <laughs> follower mark, but we'll see how far it goes. My goal is to get over 2,000 before the year ends. And that's what I told myself in January and I'm only um, 85 away, so it's pretty close. I like to use Instagram. Um, I think Instagram is a really good way to showcase an end result of things or something that's in progress. Um, if for more technical uh, outreach, again, I'd say LinkedIn for connections and building uh, connections with other brands and companies and agencies that you're shooting for. Um, but I, I'd, I'd stick to Instagram and, and, and LinkedIn for sure. So I post every single day. I always have something on my story as well. And I engage with other people. So I'll like people's stuff. I'll comment on their stuff. I'll share it if it's really good. I also respond to most of my DMs. And I just, I'm always trying to stay active on there and do the best that I can. Unfortunately, though, because of my job, I have to keep my account private. So I do put all this work into my account and trying to grow, but it can't really grow because my account is private. And so it's really hard for me to get new followers. Um, I try to ask a lot of questions in my content, uh, specifically in the comment section, um, or I'll use a lot of polls like on Instagram. I also try to make things relevant or ask like thought-provoking questions and topics just to get the conversation going. Uh, my number one tip though is to definitely engage with other people's posts by commenting, asking the questions on their own content and stuff like that. What strategies do you use to create compelling visuals for social media posts? I utilize my dance background when it comes to posing specifically. I grew up taking ballet, tap and jazz lessons, and currently I'm taking belly dance, ballroom, and Latin dances. Those, those help me shape my body well, and I use a lot of my ballet foundational skills to create my posts and my looks. So I create mood boards with Pinterest and a little bit from Facebook and just Google images and I just kind of put together what I want to put on Instagram so like I visualize it and then when I go to do the shoot I review those pictures and whatever kind of comes to mind. 
followers and increase your brand on social media? So I don't use TikTok and I just use Instagram and I found out that regularly posting, regularly engaging with followers, um, commenting on people's posts and stories, uh, replying to your DMs, like all these things are kind of, you can find any of this advice anywhere and do them, uh, but there's no make or break going viral formula yet, which I think is like the golden ticket question because everyone wants to go viral at least once, even though it's not a sustainable way to grow. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm doing. I feel like I don't have the best, the most expert advice since I'm hovering right at the 2000 follower mark, but we'll see how far it goes. My goal is to get over 2000 before the year ends. And that's what I told myself in January and I'm only um, 85 away. So it's pretty close. So in terms of getting uh, content ready, I think a lot of my modeling experience has been utilizing other tools to, you know, uh, set the tone the way that I want to in, my, in the photographs. So I like to use tools like Adobe and, uh, uh, and other tools to help me set up my, my experiences so that I can have timely uh, posts. So I'll use uh, tools like like Adobe. I'll u utilize some like uh, social media planning uh, tools, and yeah, that's about it. Try to always work with photographers and videographers that have quality content. That's really it for now. Just try to find people who will give me good content. Um, I try to do things that are color grabbing or color attention grabbing. Uh, that's kind of how I make content to begin with. I try to make color the most key element in things, whether that be fashion or if that's the background or the surrounding. What strategies do you use to keep up with the ever-changing landscape of social media? Hmm. That's a good one. <laughs> Um, it's hard for me to say if I've noticed too many big changes, so when it comes to strategies, strategizing, I really have to be true to myself, what I'm comfortable with, what values I want to stick to, and how I want to showcase that moving forward. It's all about authenticity, and if there's something I don't want to pursue, I won't. If there's something, uh, some kind of project that I would love to jump into, I'll do some research about it first, see if it fits me and who I am, and we move forward. I tend to post what I want and what I think like my followers would like to see. Um, I don't know, it's, it's more of a fun thing for me than it is trying to post for other people. And I don't know how to word that. <laughs> so there are a couple of ways I think about that. But for reels, you want to have that, like you've got three seconds to basically catch a person to watch your silly video. So that's where I think composition matters the most. So if you're doing like a slideshow picture type video, then you want to make sure the first picture is like the best one. Um, not like, you know, don't save it for the end, just put it in the beginning because that's all you might have. And I always see in my insights the viewership trickle down the longer the video is. So you only have like three seconds to really catch somebody's attention. Same with the call to action or the hook that brings people in. So that's one thing. Um, kind of what I was saying before, composition matters the most then. So either high contrast, like a close-up, a detail shot, something to really bring people into that product or that video is most important. Okay. So like I mentioned earlier, being that video content is on the rise, I'm really falling behind on keeping up with the ever-changing landscape, but I am trying to incorporate more video content. Like right now, this could be something <laughs> that I could add, but also trying to get more behind the scenes from, from photographers so that I can have something to post and be like, hey look, I'm not just a still image. I'm also a person who can move and do things, so I try to add more of that and I'm hoping I'll just add more and more as the years go by. Social media, I think it's just picking up the trends that people uh, in general are are uh, happy with, uh, things that pick up in, in social media, things like uh, content creators creating things on, on platforms like Instagram and TikTok. You know, those those gain a lot of attraction and a lot of people tend to follow the wave when it when it comes to 
content creation. So for me as a model, I, I think the best way is just keeping up with what other people are doing. Um, and I also think, you know, going off of that, I think it's better as a content creator to create your own stuff. Uh, as a model, I don't necessarily try to follow trends. I, I like to do what makes me happy in a way that um, will, will I know will gain attraction, but at the same time, it's not too personal. It's not too in my own way. It's something that kind of follows the norm of what we see as trends, but also it's, it's me, it's, it, it's who I am. I don't know if I have strategies to keep up with current social media. I think it's ever changing. Um, I've used what I've used since 2012, since Instagram kind of came out and became popular. Um, and it's kind of being authentic online and figuring out that fine line of oversharing, but then also just staying true to your content and your following. What is the place behind you called, and why is this a significant location to your modeling career? We are in the beautiful Old Town Alexandria. I've had the pleasure of living this area for the past year and a half. Before I moved here, I was introduced to a wonderful networking group of individuals, mostly photographers and models, called Portrait Meet. They get together every couple of months or so, and it's just a free event for anybody to come in and collaborate and make memories and make friends. I had the pleasure of coming here to this location in April 2022 and I took some of my favorite photos there. Made some new friends, created some fantastic new memories and I felt very proud of myself that day. I did my own hair and my own makeup. I bought all my clothes from the thrift store. <laughs> I was really proud of how it all turned out. That is why I picked this for my location. So downtown Fredericksburg is kind of where I planted my feet and started to grow up. Um, my photography, not my photography, but my modeling started with a photographer named Jessie Reynolds and she kind of got me out of my shell and we started shooting downtown and other places and it's just this is really special to me because this is where it started. We're at Union Market and this is a significant location for me because I had my very first photo shoot here two years ago and that was before I really picked up modeling as a hobby and I had the like emotional um, constitution to tell people that I'm now modeling for fun or modeling as a hobby or just cut it as I'm a model <laughs> because uh, the me from two or three years ago never would have thought I could say that but I've always wanted to do that um, and I can remember being here with no expectation no you know foresight at all about what all of this would become and how much better I would feel about myself and just how my tastes have like sharpened and all the cool people have gotten to me. Um, so I'm so happy that I had taken that chance with my college friends who were shooting me that day to put myself out there. That was the first day where I put on an outfit and I was walking to a location with those photographers and a bunch of random ladies were like, girl, I love your outfit. And from that moment on, I was hooked. I was like, oh my God. That feeling when someone compliments my outfit is like, I want to, I want to do that again. So we'll see, we'll see. I'm waiting for people to compliment my outfit. So. <laughs> this was the Tyson's Mall. Um, a few weeks back, I actually did a promotional shoot here for Shopping with a Twist, which is a marketing campaign for open carry drinks around the mall. So around here, you're allowed to take your alcoholic beverages wherever you want. And I was fortunate enough to be a part of that campaign. So it, it was really nice for me coming down here from Detroit, not really having a lot of experience in this area to finally get a cool little gig going for myself down here and get more familiar with the area. This beautiful area is Patapsco State Park. It is a huge park in Maryland and it's significant to me because it's really close to home and so whenever there's a photographer or videographer who reaches out to me and is like hey I want to do like a scenic shoot or an outdoor shoot of some sort I always pick this spot because it's so big and it's so close to home and it's so vast like the backgrounds that you could get here it's not all just like trees and leaves there's also like a railroad track there's a hanging bridge there are playgrounds and just much more um, also a lot of like ancient like historic buildings and 
stuff like walls that you can use so I really like this place because there's so much you can do the people who walk around in the park are really nice too so it's not like I feel scared or like I'm intruding on them and again just the convenience of being so close to home is really nice uh, so the place behind me is the Lincoln Monument. If you're not aware, it's in Washington, D.C. Um, and I wouldn't say it's significant to my modeling career or journey, but when I moved to Washington, D.C. back in 2016, this is a place I would come and just kind of sit on the backside watching traffic go by. And in that time, it really helped me figure out what I wanted to do in terms of creating content, being a creative, being a model, being a photographer. So I think it's kind of been the groundwork spot of where all my creativity and refocusing has come from. Yeah.